Good morning everyone, welcome to my channel. Okay, we've got our prompt, it's a snow globe. So I've got a bit of a plan for the blue one. So that's the one I'm going to start with, my blue advent calendar. Now I got this piece of fabric a couple weeks ago. Thank you Susanna from Vintage Blend Studio for enabling me. She showed it on her channel and I thought, oh, I better go and have a little look and it's beautiful. It's a Kath Holden panel. Christmas Flare by Moda. I found mine on eBay. There were some craft shops down south that were um, selling it. So I ordered a panel and there's some really pretty, pretty images on it. So I've been waiting to find something on here that I could use in my project. And um, nothing really came to fruition but um, the snow globe. So that there caught my eye. I've been thinking about that, but it's sort of, I'd, I'm just sort of thinking still. If I cut that out to make a little globe, it's nearly too small for my project and it's a shame to lose the red. So my red journal could end up with this being made into a snow globe, but I'm not sure. There is a few other designs in here that have potential, but nothing really jumping out for the red journal. That one there caught my eye, but it's not really a snow globe. The snow globe scene I sort of felt needed to be in the background looking in, not have this foreground treatment which the bird is that's a beautiful piece in itself so I ended up selecting this one so I've cut it out and it is going to be laid on my blue advent calendar I'll just get this piece of fabric out of my way so the actual globe itself will be quite simple there won't be a lot to do within it which is a little bit boring I'll be able to do, you know, um, maybe a little bit of stitching in there. We'll see how it goes. So due to my height restrictions, I'm going to fold that down and trim it. Then I'm going to curve that edge. So my snow globe will be that sort of shape, more so than a round shape, I think. Because I, th uh, maybe the round... I might be able to get it out. Yeah. Then um, the base of it, I have a couple options. I really love these trims. Now this trim I used on the front cover. It matched in beautifully with our tones. So I've got an opportunity to build the base up maybe with a couple strips of this. Just to put some bling. And because it's on the cover, I'd love to have it on the actual bunting itself so that, you know, I can look at it. So there's an opportunity to stitch two strips down and then the globe will come up from there. So that's if I do a circular one. So that's one idea. The other one is I keep it rectangular and it's more of a uh, rectangular globe with a rounded top. And then this could come in as the base of the snow globe, which would put some serious bling onto the piece. I'm just not sure. That will come, I'm sure. That's the, the one thing I'm sure of. But in the meantime, I need to work on a background. And that's where I'm gonna put a lot of my energy into stitching. So the plan is using some of these strips that I've had cut that I was using around the outer edge of the, um, uh, what, what are you, oh goodness me. I'm not tired, but I certainly feel a bit, bit slow in the head. When I was doing the edges of the numbers, I got my um, strips of fabric, cut them in half, folded them over to protect that raw edge and stitch them down. So I have a few of these strips cut, which gave me the idea of um, 
doing the background. And what I want to do is I want to weave the background. So I'm just grabbing some strips and laying them down. Now I'm thinking I'm going to keep it fairly neutral so that the snow globe itself really pops. Otherwise I run the risk of it just disappearing, especially if I wove some of the blues. So I'm just going to fold this strip. Now these strips of mine, I think they're from memory about six centimeters, not a little bit more than six centimeters, which probably, where's my inch ruler? So it's a jelly roll, two and a half inches. So my strips are going to be half that. And I'm just finger pressing it. And then slicing down. I think um, working out the actual design to meet the prompt is a challenge. And then another challenge is the background, just making it a little bit different each time, coming up with different ways to fill space. That can be just as hard as working out what you're going to do to meet the prompt. Just want some varying lengths. I'm cutting them a little bit longer than what I need because the fabric's going to, you know, kink and lift and weave. So I don't want to be short. So you can have a bit of fun with weaving because once you get your fabrics down, you can. Um, you can start um, laying in other fabrics to get your woven feel. So we need one more. I think there's a spot in here, yeah. Maybe that one. So let's just move it up out of the way. So just bear with me as I get my strips ready. Can be a bit fiddly doing a, a background like this, but once you get your invisible stitches in to hold everything and you get your pins and things like that out of your way, it comes together really well. And then you can do all sorts of things on top of your woven background. Like you can start doing some random stitches you can do some fly stitch, like seed stitch. You can nearly treat every, here comes Fudge, Mau Mau is in the room. <clears throat> you can treat every quadrant as something, every second. You'll see what I mean once we get this started. Okay, so let's get our basic strips in place and I think they're going to work quite well in the way of the size of everything. It's awful close to being, I couldn't have done that any better. Yeah, that's great. Okay. Now we need some pieces to go this way. So let's just slide that up again. Might just pin the outer edge. You can't see me on camera there, but I'm just gonna come down the outer edge 
on every second one just to hold it in place. That one we've already used, a spot we haven't. So once again, I probably could have done this off camera so that you weren't bored by this stage. You could be really exact and use a rotary cutting fabric cutter and whiz your strips off, but I'm not too worried. I want it to have that rustic, rustic look. So in addition to the fabric, I'm gonna bring some laces in too to weave in amongst it just to add a little extra interest. Is that long enough? Nearly. That's pretty good. Okay, so that's a start. So now, this is where it gets fun. Let's bring that back down so you can see. So now we're going to lay this down, but we're going to weave it as we go. So I'm going to pin, oh, that's blunt. Oh, those random pins I picked up that were on sale at a haberdashery shop. And they were like 50 cents for these little wheels of pins. And I thought, oh, what a bargain. So I bought like four, five of them. And I've got them home and they are as blunt as blunt. So I now know why they were on sale. So there you go. There's the start of the weaving process. So it's just a case of take your time, lift the piece that's going under and down it goes. Okay. Now, to add a little interest, you can start looking at some different elements to weave in there as well. Like let's let's have a play with this lace. Move that pin along so I can get that lace right in there. And this helps make your your piece just that little bit different. Now you can skip like you could do it really precise and go over and under over and under or you can skip a couple which I might with this lace. So we're just going to jump up to there, lay that down, and then maybe go back to the normal system of one over, one under, like so. Now, just to secure, we'll pop a couple little pins in, just to hold all that. Then you go through with your thread, and stitch it all down. It's as simple as that. Fiddly, but simple. It's a lot of fun woven backgrounds. So I'm just gonna cut them off a little higher than my piece because you can always come back and trim. You can, you know, trim your piece back down. Okay, so what will we do next? Do we have another cream fabric? We could weave in a hint of the blue uh, I want to keep it really neutral I don't want to I don't really want to so it's a different fabric maybe I don't have enough neutrals to do that what I could do is weave in some calico because then that would give me little blank spots that I could do some little pieces of embroidery in. 
Yeah, I might do that. So let's, because little squares for little details are a lot of fun. So let's, let's do this guy next. Um, I like these, this leaf. I don't really want to cover that up. Oh, I've got leaves at the top. Maybe I can cover that and catch the leaf at the top because you can embroider then the fabric designs as well. So I might... Do you? that I can catch catch that there okay that looks interesting now I might bring through this this spot cut that off now we're coming up to where the snow globe would sit so do I need to weave anything under that probably not because this will be all covered so we might cheat a little bit and bring bring the fabric along a little bit yeah I think we can let's let's scoot over here a little bit I don't think it'll matter okay I'll just check our snow globe in the middle there Are we in the middle? Let's just check that we are. So five and a quarter. Yeah, it's pretty close. Five and a quarter. That there technically is in the middle. So I might just jiggle that along a little bit. Now let's put, oh, last piece of lace. That one's finished. Let's do a little bit of lace next. That's good. And then we might finish with a piece of calico and that should be us to the end. Okay. Should make for an interesting background. So that goes there. It's just a case of take your time, get all your fabrics down where you want them. And you can do, you know, extra overlays where it's a little bit longer than others, you know, the gaps. Now, I feel like I need some extra trims and laces in addition. So I'm just gonna have a little look in my lace bucket here. Is there something else? It's probably a bit wide. And I want that off white colour. 
I do have a little bit more of that one. Plus that. Nothing's jumping out in there. So I sort of want something a little bit different, I think. Or do I like the fact that that's similar? I don't mind it. Don't mind the fact that that just goes straight through too. That's quite an interesting effect. I'm just going to pin it there. Just breaks up the piece. Hello, Fudgy. Yeah. What's your story? Shouldn't you be off in your your little bed now? The day is getting on. It's time for fudgy naps. I should not hear from you till about 3.30 this afternoon when it's time for fudgy supper. So I'm just popping some extra pins around the place. I think that's quite interesting. I'm sort of liking that. It doesn't look too woven. It looks random, but at a glance you can see that it's woven. So I'm sort of liking that. I think that's a, a good start. Hey, pussy. This would make a great background for a cover of a journal. Just get down some fabrics, weave them amongst each other, and then you start embellishing it with additional laces and trims. It really, really takes on a whole new um, feeling. A couple more pins just to make that feel like it's... Okay, trim all that off. I'll leave it oversized for now, as in it's bigger than my piece underneath. Just in case things sort of shrink in. I guess I've got to decide too, do I want my snow globe in the middle? Or do I want to put him a little bit off center? I don't know. I'll have to have a think about it, won't I? Hmm. Where's the trim to go on the bottom of the snow globe? Like, I really like this gold one. I'm not sure. I know I need to cut that at the top. So let's get that height trimmed off. And then we need to get a curved shape. So to do that and to make it look like it's even, I'm just going to pin that image. That's another blunt pin. And it's just pulled a thread through my image. Bloom and hang. Let's try that again. Now, let's just start with a small curve. Let's see if that looks right. Yep, that looks good. We're very close to the top of the fabric, but that's okay. Now we can have a look at our base and we can creep up. There we go. That will be a little bit smaller than that. It's so blingy. I have a bit of gold creeping through this bunting, so 
I'm pretty, pretty sure I'm going to use that. And it's just nice to find a home for some of these beautiful pieces that we have in our stash. And that would be a bit special to look at at Christmas. Just wondering if I need to make that appear a little smaller than what it is. I could pinch off a little bit there. And I could turn this edge over as well. That would get like a quarter of a, an eighth of an inch probably off of the height of the band, which I think might help it look in proportion. Because I can't really trim it because that's just going to have everything let go. So if I turn those little edges under. Fudgy, you were gone into bed. Why are you back again? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's going to work. That's just going to narrow down that. Mm. Anyway, in the meantime, before we even get to the snow globe side of things. We need to get our background stitched it down. So what I'm going to do now is get my needle and thread and will I do invisible stitch or will I go straight through to needle and thread? I might try it and see how much these um, pins annoy me. So I need a needle. I've only got little needles around at the moment. All my nice big needles, other than that's like a, you could ride a horse with that needle, are little ones because of the rest have fallen down the couch and I can't get to them. This couch I have has, ah, um, oh, here comes Fudge. I go pull my chair out, up comes the cat. He's walking through Fudge. No, don't sit there, you. Say hello, everyone. Just say hello, Fudge. Okay, come on, Fudgy. If you can see his face if I turn him up this way. Hey, puss. There he is. <laughs> Get those eyes. Oh, what trouble. Off you go, Fudge. <clears throat> Start getting this down. Now I'm going to start in the middle and work out because that just helps stabilize the piece and it's just going to be a simple camphor stitch. And it's just once again just a running stitch through it. You can do as much or as little of the stitch as you want. because it's all just, um, what's the word for it? It's just tacking it all down, but it's like another layer of detail on top. As you run down the, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give myself some lines, guys. Then I don't have to think too much because I'll have a few guidelines just to aim for. So I'm just going to go through and do a few little marks. And like I said, they don't have to be even. They can be a couple close together little bit of distance on the next one. Just a bit of a guide. Couple close. So this will take me a while to do, which is great. So 
I'm just doing random distances. And then once I get these vertical stitches down, you can then come back through and do horizontal stitches. And it really adds to adds to it. And then as for the snow globe, that'll be just stitched into place, but I will need to find a, a trim. Where's that edge of that fabric? Right there. I will need to find a trim to go around the perimeter of the snow globe, just to make it really feel like it is a glass. That's pretty good. That's a couple more here. Now, as I said before, you might decide that if you do a weaving, these little pockets where there's no print, they could have little embroideries done in them too, which I might do yet. Just get all these lines into position and then we'll see sort of once I start getting it secure, I can start playing with some little details. Okay, so now I'm going to start looking at some of these horizontal lines. I think by the time I do all this camphor stitching, it's going to look quite decorative already. And I won't be doing anything additional to the squares, but we'll see. Makes it easy for you, doesn't it? Having the lines drawn. Okay. It's just a guide anyway. Whether I stitch all of them, we shall see. Whoops. So what do you think of the new project? Doesn't that sound like fun? Down the garden path. My head is just spinning with ideas, but I don't know where it'll end up. The garden path part, the plant garden part, that's just gonna be so much fun. But what to make it into, that's my challenge. What to actually create with this piece. I don't know if I want a wall hanging because it's, I really don't have a wall anyway. So I'm just not sure. I've got a, a, a uh, cotton reel, what do they call them? A bobbin. So I can certainly make a piece that winds around a bobbin. So that's definitely an option. Then I started thinking about, well, if I could do some panels that made something. And I thought, well, I could do with a bag to carry my projects in. If I created the pattern For the bag 
and then those panels or those bits was used to decorate through the project and then at the very end it comes together as a, uh, a bag. I thought it would be fun. At least then I can use it and it'll be a garden inspired bag to carry my projects in. So that was one idea. And I've got some patterns for bags in the cupboard that I've picked up over the years. Project bags, things like that, which I've never made. So I thought if that could be my base pieces. Then I had another idea of getting a, a, um, a pattern for a bear or something. You remember back in the day when at weddings... You'd, you'd get a signature bear and they were like a calico bear that everyone at the wedding would uh, sign for the bride and groom and write a little message on them. I had thought of maybe finding a pattern for a teddy bear and then cut his, cutting his pieces out or even drawing the pieces onto a bigger piece so that when it came time to cut his pattern out, I had embroidered in the right spots and then cut him out and make him into a teddy and he would have embroidery all over him. So that was one idea. And then I started thinking about all these pieces that could be, uh, all these animals that could be made into an embroidered version with my garden all over them. So yeah, I've got a few ideas I'm sort of thinking about. I do like the idea of a bag because then it's useful and then I can admire the embroidery. I must go and have a look at the patterns that I've got. It'd be great to use one like, oh my goodness, all these patterns I pick up. I'll make that one day. Like an actual, a bag would be really handy. Then, I don't know, I've got an embroidered bag in the cupboard that was an actual kit and it's got a little house on the front and a garden and I made it years ago. There was so much work in it and I love it, but I never take it out because I'm worried it's going to get dirty or damaged and there's all this embroidery on it. So it sort of has become precious. So what's the point of making a bag if the thing is just going to become precious and just sit in the cupboard? Oh, what a quandary. The other thing I thought of is a piece of clothing. But then do I want to wear a garden? Probably not. You see these gorgeous pieces of clothing that have been embellished on um, Pinterest like denim jackets and the the yoke across your shoulders has embroidery through it. Just beautiful. I love, love looking at all that. But do I want to wear it? Then how do you launder it? Because these are like morsels of goodies that probably won't stand up to washing. So that was another idea. It would make a great trim around the bottom of a skirt a green, a, um, a garden. But would I wear it? Probably not. I barely wear a skirt on the best occasions, let alone a heavily embroidered, embellished piece. <laughs> I don't know. We've got a bit of time, so I'm just tossing around ideas at the moment of what I can make. Okay, so this is coming along. I've got two rows stitched in. The pins aren't too much of a problem. So I don't think I need to invisible stitch down. Maybe if the piece was in my hands dangling in the air, then it would be catching. But because my piece is laying flat, comes that fudge again. 
I'm sort of just sneaking through where there's no pins. And I think once I get a few of these random lines through, I can get rid of the pins and it, it'll hold. So I'm just going to cut my thread so I know it will get through at least two rows. And then pick two lines that are close together like here and just having the lines pre-marked makes it so much quicker too because you're not having to constantly stop and check that you're straight you can just focus on sticking to the lines and making sure the fabric is not puckered Okay. It's a bit boring for you watching me do this. But that's slow stitch, isn't it? It's meant to slow us down. And down we go. Oh, I love doing this type of work. So tomorrow's video, I actually filmed through the week. And it's creating the Red Book journal. So I'm creating a decorative element for the spine, a slow stitch piece. So if you watched the video last, probably Sunday, you'll know I sort of brainstormed the idea and then I went away and stitched. And the piece is now to the stage where the background is done and now it's the embellishing on top. And then I think the next video, which is the next Sunday, will be stitching it into the spine itself and all the signatures. So it forms up a book. Now, I have filmed those two episodes, so they're ready for this Sunday and next Sunday. And the journal is sitting here beside me, constructed. But I'm not going to show you. It's a surprise. So in the meantime, I've got plenty of work to do here. This will keep me occupied. And I might just... I might run a line down here. I don't have it marked, but I'm going to do it because I want to make sure that that edge is secure through here. And I can use the lace as my straight edge. Oh, that cat meowing. I don't know if you can hear him, but gosh, he winds me up. I know he's just chatting. I know he's just talking to me, but oh my goodness, he gets me. Because I know it's not food. The um, garage door is open now, so he can go outside and lay in the sun and do whatever pussies do. So it is purely sit down, I want your lap. So he's demanding that I stop what I'm doing and go and sit on the couch for him to sit on my lap. So he's having a bit of a, a hissy fit. He'll get to the point when he realises that that's just not going to happen and he'll crawl into his cat stand and sleep for the day. But till then, I get this bellowing cat. Casper doesn't do that. Casper barely says a word. But Fudge, oh my goodness, ever since he was a kitten, just chat, chat, chat. He's Burmese, but I think he's got Siamese in him. He's very yappy. It's like having someone yelling at you all the time. It just, oh, goodness me. There we go. Okay, how are we going for time? So we've got 15 minutes. 
So I think we can do another row. I'm sure you're all stitching away, crafting away. Here he comes again. Oh, goodness me. Pretty good. Let's pick another spot that's crucial to holding everything, which I think over here. So it doesn't take long. Well, I guess it does take a while to get this secure. But some good mindless sewing. Don't have to think too much. The effect should be really good, which will give a nice, neutral, interesting background for the little snow globe. I guess the decision too is, do we just place the slow, snow globe in the middle or do I look for some form of decorative element that goes around it, like something floral or some words? I don't know. Got a bit of time to think about it because there's a lot of stitching here to do. Hello, Fudge. You again. Come, Pussy. He's going to jump up again. Come, Puss. No, nope. he's looked and thought, you're only going to put me back down on the floor once I get up there. Fudgy. Puss, puss. What's the matter? You're being very distracting. Go, puss, puss. Here he is again. There he is. My goodness me, Fudge. Seriously. You're going to get a pin in you. Fudgy is purring. Come on. That's a boy. Good pat, off to bed. <laughs> now I've got cat hair on my piece. Okay. Have I got enough? I should have to get back. I might just do a line of stitching through this lace next just to secure it so I can remove those few pins it's been raining all week in Brisbane not heavy rain but en enough to be annoying when you want to go out and do things because you're getting wet between running through car parks Plus, we had a leaking roof, which was very annoying. We didn't lose any stock, but getting someone out to fix it never happens until it stops raining, which doesn't help much when it's leaking. So my genius husband created this apparatus to catch the water underneath the leak and then through a pipe, it went through the louvers and out the building where it was coming directly into the store, which is no good. So hopefully a roofing man can come today and fix it, but I bet not. I bet they are busy, busy. It's always the way. Everyone wants them when there's a leak and then as soon as the sun comes out, oh, that just makes it 
Oh, that's tight. I'm gonna have to do a little bit of tricky, tricky work here. Concentration is key to get that threaded. And knotted, done. Okay. I must say a message to the Roxy ladies. Um, if you girls are coming to Brisbane, and I believe you have a relative, a brother in Carindale, if you get time, you must, must visit a thread store that is at um, Norman Park, I think it is. So just down the road from where you would be called All Threads, I think it is. I must send you a message just to tell you about it. Let me just look it up. I think it's All Threads. It is amazing. There's so many threads. Yeah, Norman Park. So you would be not far from it. Just check her open, opening hours, girls. And if there's anyone in Brisbane, that's the house. And then, then downstairs is her little shop. And it's just full of books to do with embroidery and threads from all different categories, from ribbons through to silks, through to DMC, through to wools. It is just amazing. So that's the little business, all thread embroidery. So Rachel, um, Sarah, if you are in town long enough to slip in there, I'd highly recommend it because you girls will love it. And if there's anyone in Brisbane that would like to go and check it out, go for it because it is really, really cool. I must get back there too. I've got a few threads that have been used. So it might be time for my my revisit and their book section is amazing she's got it all categorized so if you are into cruel work or uh, applique you can sort of go to that section and there they all are and they're like the latest books too it's not like it's old stock she is really on top of her books. So girls, if you happen to be listening to this video, a little message for you from a, a Brisbane girl, that's the shop to go and visit. I'm going to be in Melbourne next weekend. So if there's any places in Melbourne that you girls know of that is worth a visit, I actually will have a hire car for the weekend so I could slip away and visit visit some establishments. So if you are a Melbourne girl and you can recommend your favourite shop selling all these bits and pieces, drop it in the comments. Even if I don't get there, at least any other Melbourne girls that are listening may go for a little drive and check out these stores i've got to go to sydney in the new year for work so i'd love to get to have a look at the sewing basket that sarah talks about that would be rather cool we've got a similar thing here in um, beanley so it's not like i don't want for upcycled products the cruel goblin goblin i think is in sydney that'd be worth a visit sarah has spoken about that okay i think we're getting close to the close to the hour yes we are so i've got a few minutes so i've got a little bit of thread i'm going to whiz down this side and that will get rid of those last few pins my phone is buzzing it's getting to that time of the morning when 
the staff are starting to make their way to work. So nice, simple background, but a lot of stitching, which is great. Gives me some mind rest. It's a very effective background. You can do so much with this weaving technique. You can weave all sorts of things through. Especially if you've got snippets of bits and pieces that are treasures. Just finds them a little home. Now that this side edge is secure, I'll be able to trim my piece because nothing's going to be moving now. I guess my biggest tip is to start in the middle with your first line and work your way out to the edge. That just keeps the fabric moving out and not puckering. of that little excess piece and that pin so that's pretty good that's nice and secure with some more downward stitches and then I can start coming across you can see how it makes just such a pretty background that top edge can be trimmed now nothing's going to wriggle Beautiful. There we go. Some nice mindless stitching. So I just got to do along this little bit here and that will be all secure. I just turn my pins downward. Because that's the way I'm stitching, so it sort of helps keep everything out of my way. There we go. A couple stitches and the last of the pins will be gone. Okay, guys, I will finish all my rows and then I will stitch into position my snow globe and its base. Um, so when I see you in the next video, this should be completed and we can start the red one all right everyone i will see you all in the next video have a great weekend and see you all next saturday bye for now